Hey everyone, after about a two year absence, we are back. I'm doing some Ember screencasts again. There are some caveats. First one you're gonna like, I don't plan on reinstating a subscription fee. And the second one is that there's no set release schedule because I'm doing this for fun now. So if you have topic requests, Go ahead and send them to me at jeffrey at emberscreencast.com or comment below, either on the site or on YouTube, because it's at both now. And also, I have two or three days a week available for consulting, so if you want to work with me, email me, jeffrey at emberscreencast.com. All right, now let's get to the screencast. Angle bracket components have been a long time coming. They are first proposed sometime in 2015, and now in Ember 3.4, they are here. If you're not on Ember 4, then that's all right. There's a polyfill, Ember Angle Bracket Invocation Polyfill, that can be used as far back as Ember 2.12. Presumably, it can also be used on 2.13, 2.14, and 2.15, but I think they're only listing the LTS releases here. Now, before we go on to show how to use the Engelbrecht components, it's important to note that the classic invocation syntax or curly braces invocation syntax is not deprecated. However, it does seem like we're moving in that direction since the guides are going to be changing to use this new syntax. Throughout the rest of this video, we're going to be going through seven examples, each of which add a new nuance or use case to the angle bracket components and compares them to the old style of components. So here we have our basic invocation. We have a component called cool paragraph, which I'll show you in just a second. And we have our old classic style and then we're passing in a named argument, cool thing. And then we have our angle bracket components. So the obvious differences are it's an angle bracket instead of curlies, hence the name. We've also changed from dasherized names of the component to ones that have the first letter of every word capitalized. We also, instead of having a bare argument, we have an at symbol before the argument. And then here we have this self-closing component, but we could, if we wanted to, have it close like this. So in this way, they act like HTML elements. So let's take a look at the component that we're calling. Here we have our component, and notice it's just one component. It is the same component that we're calling with the curly brackets as we're calling with the angle brackets. That's one reason why, even though they are sometimes called angle bracket components colloquially, officially they're called angle bracket invocation style because it's just a style of invoking a component. Now, there are some differences that we'll see later on, but for almost all cases, the component you're invoking can be invoked using this style or this style. So this paragraph component is really simple. It just takes the cool thing argument that we pass in, and it puts it in a paragraph with, you know what's cool. So let's see this in action. You know what's cool? Curly components. You know what's cool? Angle bracket components. And then again, without the self-closing. All right, so that's the very basic case. So the next question that I had when I was exploring this is, are these one-way components? Because back in the day, in the original RFC, they were going to be one-way data binding by default. So to check that out, 
I created a uh, text changer component, which is basically just a wrapper for an input helper. And by the way, notice that input helpers and uh, va dynamic variables, they're still curly braces. No angle brackets there. The angle brackets is just for components. And I personally like that because it makes it easier to tell what's a component and what is not. So anyway, you can see that here there is no action. It is just a binding of cool thing to text to change. So we'll see, is it one way? If so, then changing this will not change anything else. But as we can see, bindings are by default two-way on the angle bracket invocation style. And that fits with how we're calling it angle bracket invocation style, because having one-way data binding by default would be a much larger change than just an invocation style. That would change how the component is working. All right, next up, we'll look at how this works with block components. So here we see in the old style, you have a pound sign followed by the name, and that pound sign tells us that it's a block component. And then we have the forward slash that shows us that we're ending that block component. Here in the angle bracket component, we have no pound sign at the front. It's just a regular element, but it's not self-closing. And then we have the forward slash at the end. So that's how to do it as a block component. Before we leave, I want to point out something that I should have pointed out in the last example. So here where we have a variable being passed down as an argument, we have to put the curly braces on the variable. Whereas in the curly brace invocation, it was already inside one of those, so you could just put it in plain. Also note how it changes this sub-expression on, on change to regular curly braces. If you're curious what this looks like, here it is. All right, now it's time to go to our next example. And this one is where things start to become slightly different for each one. So here we're adding HTML attributes. The HTML attributes in question are data test and class. Notice how on both of them, they are put there plainly without an at symbol. It's only on the angle bracket invocation that it's differentiated from the named arguments that are passed in. So in the angle bracket component, it's very easy to tell what's something that's being passed in to be on the root element and what's something being passed in to be used in the component. There's also another difference which will actually affect how you're writing these components. So let's look at these. So the top one is the one with curly brackets, bottom one is angle brackets. Okay, so this top one, we'll see the class of blue is passed in. That's good. But the data test is not. Whereas on the bottom one, blue is passed in and data test is also passed in. Now there is a way so that you can pass in any attributes that you'd like. And to do that, we'll need to go to cool paragraph and put in an attribute bindings. And if you do that, then you'll see that data test is put into both. So this is the first big difference we've seen on how components will behave differently 
whether they're called with the angle bracket invocation and the curly bracket invocation. Our next difference, however, will be even more stark. So let's go to a tagless HTML attribute. And as you can see right away, it doesn't work for curly bracket components, not the way we want it to. Let's look at that code. So we're going to, here we have something very similar, except we're using the tagless cool paragraph instead of the regular cool paragraph. And in this tagless cool paragraph, we'll see that tag name is a blank string. So instead of having a div and then a paragraph below it, it's just a paragraph tag. And so what this looks like here is here, just a plain paragraph tag. Well, here in the Engelbrack invocation, it has the class of blue and the data test of hello. And how we're achieving that, that doesn't happen automatically. What you have to do in the template is use the new dot, dot, dot attributes. And so that'll splat the attributes in whatever tag you want to use. You can even put them in another component, so pass them on down. My first thought on how to make up for this was to put in the attribute bindings again. Maybe that would work, but you can't use those on a tagless component, so that's out. What ended up working was putting each of the attributes that we want on the element manually. And so if we do that, we'll see that it once again works in the curly components, but it's not working for the angle bracket components. The reason for that is that we're now treating these like named arguments instead of HTML attributes. To get it to working on both, you need to do that. Now, I personally think that this version is much better because it's more flexible and shorter. And so if you know that you're going to be using Engelbrecht components, then you can save quite a bit of effort by doing the splatted attributes. If you want to know more about how the splatted attributes work, David Tang wrote a great post, and one big portion of it is showing all the different edge cases with the splatted attributes. The next edge case we'll cover is positional arguments. So we've already seen named arguments. So that would be this. Positional arguments, on the other hand, just say, all right, the first one here, that is going to be called this variable. And it's defined in the component, positional params. The first one, the only one here is cool thing. And so in our template, we can reference cool thing, even though here we're not labeling it that specifically. In angle bracket components, you can't do that. However, you're not completely stuck. If you have a component that uses positional arguments, what you can do, or positional params as they call it, then what you can do is just Go ahead and treat it as a named argument. So we'll name this cool thing. And now we'll see that it works. If you do try and use a positional argument, you'll see that it'll throw a compiler error. It really doesn't want you to do that. Once again, named arguments work. Now, there are some built-in components like link to that still want to have positional arguments. So this first one, 
in the old way would look like this. And in the new way, it looks like this. We've gotten around this by passing in params and then using the array helper from the Ember array helper add-on to pass in our two parameters. I don't really recommend this, and for future videos, I'll just be using the old link to helper. But if you want angle bracket invocation everywhere, then you can make it work with link to. And if you want to go source diving, you can probably figure out how they made this work. Because I did check, it doesn't work on just a regular component. All right, let's go to our final example. And this one is an easy one. One word component names. So we just made a component called paragraph and we tried to call it. And as you'll see, the one with the angle bracket components, the one below the HR, it works. The one above, nothing shows up, not even an error message. So that is all of our seven examples. This is a lot more thorough than I thought I would be because there was more depth to this than I thought. But I hope by now you have a really good understanding of how to use the angle bracket components or the angle bracket invocation style in your apps. If you want to go and check on the code, I created this repository. I'll provide the link in the show notes. And if you go and click on the commits, you'll see that there's one specifically for this screencast. So go ahead, run the code, and play with it yourself. To sum up what we learned today, angle bracket invocation style and curly bracket invocation style are mostly the same. You just call your named arguments a little bit different and you call the name a little bit different and a little bit different style. One way binding by default, not a thing. It used to be in the spec, but it is not anymore. Block components, yes, you can do those. And this is how. HTML attributes, they make it a little bit easier. So for example, you don't have to have attribute bindings for data test. And also you can tell your attributes from your named arguments. Then in tagless HTML attributes, stuff gets even better because this doesn't work at all without some special stuff. Well, as this, all it requires is just a little dot, dot, dot attributes on the tag where you want to put these HTML attributes. Then positional arguments is one of the differences where angle bracket components aren't nearly as flexible as the old style components. I'm not sure the reasoning behind this. Possibly it's to make these more rigid and predictable. So to give a smaller surface area of API. And finally, you can have one word component names. I hope you enjoyed learning with me today. Go ahead and send a topic request either to my email or comment below. And if you have Ember.js consulting needs, go ahead and send me a message. As of the release of this video, I have two or three days available per week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.